Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see so many people here. And I mean, I guess, I mean, it is a pandemic, but <laughs> it's still good to see all y'all. Um, and thank you for being here. And um, I hope that you're blessed. A few announcements. We have a PPRC meeting this Tuesday at 7 o'clock via Zoom. Um, if you're on the. We're going to have it here, never mind. That's right. We'll be, over in the friendship we'll be in the friendship classroom at seven o'clock. Uh, we will be socially distant, and uh, we'll be wearing masks. Yeah. Yep, including me. All right. I got a mask that matches my sir suit. suit. <laughs> <laughs> but brothers and sisters, it's Easter, and I hope that um, you feel the presence of love, the presence of of compassion. And the presence of grace in this place this morning. Amen? Amen. Let us open our hearts and minds to worship. people. Lord of love, keep leading us to be an Easter people. Mary Magdalene was broken by grief over the death of Jesus. Healing came when Jesus rose from the grave and spoke words of hope to her. Jesus' work continued through her. Lord of love, keep leading us to be an Easter people. Power tried to break compassion. Evil attempted to fracture justice and death sought to shatter love but compassion justice and love endured jesus lives and jesus works through us lord of lord love, love keep leading us, us to be an easter people many around us are hurting from sickness loneliness anger or despair may we be led to ease the hurt by living out the outgoing the ongoing call of compassion lord of love, love. Keep leading us to be an Easter people. Many are still broken by the dismay caused by injustice, disenfranchisement, and inequality. May we continue to speak out and work boldly against injustice wherever we find it. Lord of God, keep leading us to be an Easter people. All around us are those who feel broken by the angst caused by divisive partisan strife and constant social discord. 
May we be inspired to find the ties that bind so you can always to see us in them and then and them in us. Lord of love, keep leading us to be an Easter people. Our first hymn this morning is Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
Growing up, my mom used to say, I still love you, but. <laughs> you ever get that? Son, I still love you, but you gotta clean your room because it is filthy. Son, I love you, but you are 10 minutes late from coming home and you know you're grounded for a week. Give me your keys, which was awful. Son, you know I love you, but I don't know if I like that girl you're dating. But it wasn't Jennifer, she loved her. <laughs> son, I love you, but you ever get son, I love you, but, or daughter, I love you, but? Come on, church. Have we all been there? <laughs> this song is an I love you, but. Where, where, where the person writing this song is, is struggling and, and doesn't know what to do and, and is saying, you know, God, I hear you say you love me, but. But this is the response. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever, which means there is no but. God loves, <laughs> period. And it reads on from 14 to 24. For the Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted, and the right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely. There's the but part, right? But he did not give me over to death because there is no but. Love is love. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected have become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Brothers and sisters, no matter where you come from in life and no matter where you are in life and no matter what you're going through, you are loved. You are loved by God who loves you, period. There is no buts, there is no ands. It is just love because that's what God is. God is love, amen? amen. So today is a good day because today we get to celebrate that love. Let's go to God in prayer. inspires us and leads us. But Lord, the world is also a harsh and difficult place. So we ask that love also strengthens us. Guide us and lead us. Hear us as we pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples by our saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, please be seated, and children, please join me. inside the ring. <laughs> so around September, I start looking. <laughs> All right. My wife just said, I love you, but. <laughs> but you gotta work on that. Anyway, I'm gonna show you a picture of my family, okay? Okay. And you want me to show it again? That's my family. You notice anything different? I see you. You see me? You see me? Right? Ned's not born in this oh, picture. I know. I know. That, that's, that's, that's my nephew. That's my nephew, Charles. When he was five, he's 17 now. Is that right? That's right. That's, um, that's my sister, Mary Marina Kimono. That's my Aunt Lizette, who's online now. That's uh, my stepmother, Ruthie, and she's online too. Who's that right there? That's my dad. That's my dad. You? I know it he does look like me, huh? Yeah, he still looks like you, huh? Exactly. <laughs> Except he has glasses. That's that's my aunt in the middle of the picture. But notice, no, you are in the middle. I am in the middle of the picture. That's right. But notice anything different? Notice how everyone's very different looking. Yeah. We got. You it, you that you I did not adopt anyone. No. <laughs> but but let me tell you though. So there are people from Japan here, right? <laughs> She was from North Carolina at the time, but now she lives in Virginia. All these people up here, they live in Virginia. Um, I know, I live in Virginia for a little bit. Uh, they live, you know, they have a son that lives in uh, somewhere in like Florida. One lives in Florida, one lives in Texas. I got family that lives in California. I got family, like there's a crowd that was behind there. And there are people from Denver there. And people from Pittsburgh, and people from uh, other places that I, that I had written down that I didn't write it down. But now I finally uh, know what your house is. This is not my house, this is the church I got married in. <laughs> if that was my house, that would be sweet, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, you know. But, but, I'm sorry. But you know what? They're all different, but you know what they all have in common? What? That every one of them are loved. Every one of them are loved by me and by my wife. Every one of them loves us. That's why they came here. What day is today? Sunday. Sunday, yeah, but what special day is today? Easter. Today and is Easter. Like birthday. And your birthday? What? Yeah. Can we sing happy birthday? Can we sing happy birthday? Yeah. <laughs> All right, ready? Um, Justin, yeah. start us off. Happy birthday to you. Every one of you are loved. And what, let me tell you what Easter is about. Easter is about Jesus dying on the cross. And they went complex and say, Who's done it to the boys? 
That was Friday. That was Friday, but that's really good. Easter meant, meant, meant the cross could not stop Jesus. And that Jesus still loves us, right? And, and that Easter tells us that, that nothing can stop love. Not, not bad people, not people who, who are different, not people who disagree with us. Love is always around, right? And you know how we celebrate Easter best? By loving others. Can you do that? Yeah. That's right, that's right. Because Easter is about love going on forever. Amen? Amen. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to pray and you're going to repeat after me, all right? Okay. All right. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Thank you for love. Thank you for love. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, you'll go with Abby downstairs, all right? <laughs> Hold on, trust me. See, all I wanted to see the picture. taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, 
Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbanai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. You've heard the ancient story. Did you hear the part where Jesus says, don't hold on to me? Now, you know, there's a lot going on in this passage. There's a lot going on in this passage, and uh, Mary, like for instance, Mary Magdalene going to the tomb at night. That's significant. Or, or the, the foot race between Peter and this beloved disciple is really quite funny if you think about it. Did you hear that part of the story? Where, where you know, the, Mary sends, gives the news that, that Jesus is, is not there and he's not in the grave. And so there's a foot race. Peter takes off running. This beloved disciple then passes him up Stops at the tomb and Peter goes on in. Y'all ain't laughing. I think it's funny. <laughs> I think it's funny. Mary Magdalene mistaken Jesus for a gardener. She mistook him for a gardener in a place where there was no garden. Ancient Israel didn't have um, didn't have groundkeepers like we do, which makes this message curious, doesn't it? But I'm going to focus on Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene being broken and weeping at the empty tomb and the resurrected Jesus calling her by name Mary and then telling her, do not hold on to me. Because why would Jesus say such a thing? Why would he say that? Mary Magdalene was broken. Broken by confusion because all she wanted to do was pay her respects and say goodbye honoring Jesus one last time, and the body isn't even there. Mary Magdalene was broken, broken by grief because of what she saw on Friday, where Jesus was arrested by the Roman authority and then humiliated and tortured on the Sabbath, on the Sabbath. See, Rome was sending the message, this is what happens when you speak out. This is what happens when you demand change. Know your place. Ever been told to know your place? 
And when Jesus died, it broke the hearts of those who loved him. And it broke the faith of those who followed him. Mary Magdalene was broken. She was broken by fear and uncertainty. Who is going to be the voice of justice now? Who is going to be a champion for the poor? Who is going to be the word for the oppressed? Where is radical compassion going to come from now? Like when Jesus helped the centurion who was a Roman, or when he helped the garrison who was a Gentile, showing the world that despite racial divides and sectarian hostilities between people groups, love can still rise. How is love going to show up now? We're all we're welcomed. We're all we're empowered. And we're all we're treated with dignity and, and worth. Mary Magdalene was broken. Broken by dismay. Because she couldn't go back to where she was. She couldn't pretend nothing ever happened. Everything had changed. But what Jesus started was shattered by power. And the world was still fractured by oppression and fractured by corruption and fractured by greed. And Mary Magdalene didn't know what to do. Brothers and sisters, have you ever been broken? And when Jesus said, Mary, Mary recognized who she was. And I picture, I picture her being confused and yet relieved. You ever been there? You can nod your head. Shocked and yet comforted. In a state of disbelief and yet she believed. And she was crying and laughing at the same time. You ever do that? And her tears of sadness turned into tears of joy. But most of all, Easter, Easter made Mary Magdalene whole again. But she was still scarred. She was still scarred by the brokenness she had just experienced. And that's how life is, isn't it? That when we are broken, there are still scars. Many of us have scars, don't we? I have scars. Many of us have scars from grief. Or scars from despair. Or scars from disappointment and hurt. But there is this art called Kintsukori. Say it with me, Kintsukori. Kintsu Kori. Kintsu Kori is the Japanese art of taking broken pottery, pottery like this, and putting those pieces back together again using liquid adhesive mixed with gold or silver powder, where the repaired pottery has these golden veins. Can you see it? The pottery has these golden veins. Showing where it was cracked and showing where it was broken. And it celebrates the idea that when something is broken, we do not throw it away and move on. When, when something is broken, we don't try to hide the damage out of embarrassment because it's not perfect. Or when something is broken, those crap, we don't cover the brokenness pretending it's not there and ignoring it. Ah. Uh, those cracks, those breaks, aren't, aren't sources of shame. They are proof of resiliency. That's Kintsu Kori. Brothers and sisters, I have scars. We all do, don't we? I have scars. <clears throat> but my scars also reveal veins of love where loved ones surrounded me and comforted me. I have scars. But my scars of despair also reveal veins of grace where I was picked up and supported. I have scars, but my scars of disappointment reveals veins of triumph where I was encouraged to keep on going. And that's the beauty of Easter. Like King to Corey, Mary Magdalene was not told to get it together. She was not told to have more faith. She was never told that she was not good enough. And those cracks of grief, grief that Mary Magdalene endured were filled and she was given veins of hope by Jesus who was still scarred. 
those broken places of fear that Mary Magdalene felt or feel that she was given veins of possibility by Jesus who was still bruised. Those shattered pieces of dismay that Mary Magdalene felt were filled and she was given veins of resolve by Jesus who rose again. And so when Jesus says, don't hold on to me, it may sound insensitive, but the writer is pointing back to John chapter 1. Everything in the Gospel of John, by the way, points back to John chapter 1. Next week, we're going to preach on John chapter 1 again. Or not John chapter 1, but we will. We're going to talk about another passage of John, which will also point back to John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And Jesus is the Word of God made into flesh. The Word, the Greek word is logos. The Word are those universal truths, stating that regardless of who, they, of who we are, or what we believe, or how we were born, there are truths that make life worth living, isn't there? Universal truths that make life worth living. Justice is a universal truth, because all should be free to live a life of dignity, and we should all strive for it, either for ourselves or for other people. Compassion is a universal truth, because we will all struggle sometimes. And we should receive compassion when we need it. And we should offer compassion when others need it. Church, do you hear me? Love is a universal truth because love is what ignites justice. And love is what inspires compassion. And love is what connects us together even when we have differences. And love is what connects us to God even when we struggle. And Jesus says, don't hold on to me. Because, friends, we don't hold on to the word. We don't hold on to the word. We don't hold on to justice. We can only seek it by doing all we can to make sure all are free, by being aware of what's happening in the world, and by speaking out when there is an injustice, protest if necessary, just as Jesus did. Brothers and sisters, we can't hold on to compassion. We can only offer it by doing all we can to make sure all people are helped by feeding the hungry and visiting the sick and welcoming the marginalized, just as Jesus did. Friends, we can't hold on to love. We can only live it by doing all we can to bring heaven to earth, treating all people with dignity and with respect, just as Jesus did. We don't hold on to Jesus. We don't hold on to Jesus, the Word made flesh. We live the life that follows in his ways. So when Jesus told Mary Magdalene, don't hold on to me, he was saying Easter is not the end of the story. It is a continuing story of the Word at work in the world, a story that existed in the beginning, and a story that continues through us. And friends, there's work to be done, isn't there? Come on. And Jesus told her to preach that message. Preach that message. Preach that message and let the world see how her scars of grief were filled with compassion. Go out and let the world see how her scars of fear, of fear were filled with resolve for justice. To go out and, and let the world see her scars of disappointment being filled with hope. To go out and let the world see how her scars were filled with love. Brothers and sisters, Mary Magdalene was broken because she thought love was taken by power and corruption and by greed. But like he to Corey, Easter mended her brokenness, held together by justice, compassion, and love. She was held together by the word because Easter tells the world. Not the power of authoritarian empire. Not the darkness of hate. Not the corruption of greed. Not the silence of fear can destroy the word or the law. God. It can't destroy God. And it can't destroy those universal truths of justice, compassion, and love. That's the power of Easter. 
All that to say this. I know that we've been through a lot this year, haven't we? It's been a tough year. Many of us are broken. <clears throat> we are broken mentally, emotionally, spiritually, because of these difficult times. There is so much happening, isn't there? Stuff happening in our homes, and in our country, and in our world, and it can be overwhelming. So do you feel broken? But like King Tukori, let justice fill those broken places. Let compassion mend those cracks. Let love hold us together. Because like King Tukori, we are called to put those broken pieces together by seeking inclusive justice and by offering consistent compassion and by always choosing love. And if we do, if we follow in the ways of Jesus, we will see veins of peace. We will see veins of equality and we will see veins of unity holding our homes together and holding this community together and holding our country together and holding the world together. And friends, I know we can do it. Oh, I know we can do it. Because we're doing it now in this church. Last Easter felt broken, didn't it? Last Easter, this place was empty. It was just me and, and Justin and Richard. Me and my seersucker, Justin and his Technicolor Jacob 3, 300 colored coat. <laughs> Red and green and blue and yellow. <laughs> and Richard at the organ. <clears throat> and it was hard because it rained too. <laughs> it gets even better. The lights wouldn't come on. <laughs> Do you remember that? It was rough. <clears throat> Last Easter felt broken. But like King Tukori, hope kept filling those broken spaces of, of impatience and dismay. And love is holding us together now because of your commitment to one another and your commitment to this community. And the world sees the unique beauty of who we are. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, it's Easter. So today we celebrate what love did what love overcame, and what love will continue to do through us. It's Easter, and no matter how broken you may, we may feel, hold to the belief that love always wins. Love always wins, and love will fill those broken places and hold us together. But don't hold on to Easter. Do the work of Easter. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor! It's been so long since we've been able to do this, right? Because there's been so few people here. So we're going to do it now because I got real excited when all y'all came in. For those of you who are by yourselves watching at home, just look at the camera and do this, all right? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Don't hold on to Easter. Don't hold on to Easter. Do the work of Easter. Do the work of Easter. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Say it louder. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Don't hold on to Easter. Don't hold on to Easter. Do the work of Easter. Do the work of Easter. And fill those broken places with justice, compassion, and love. Amen? Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, please stand and join me in the state of faith found in your bulletin. We believe in God, who has created and is created who works in others and us through the Spirit. We follow in the way of Jesus, celebrating God's presence, living with respect in creation, and loving and serving others, seeking justice and resisting injustice, and seeking out hope and peace. We believe every person, regardless of color, religion, creed, age, class or orientation is the child of God. We are connected because we are family. We gather because we all have something to share. We encourage one another and hold each other accountable. But most of all, 
we love one another. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our next hymn is He Lives. his music, 
carried us through. And so, Justin, I'm forever thankful for what you do. Um, and I know that Second Press is going to be blessed to have you. Amen? Yeah. All right. Um, so he's going to come up with me so you can wish him luck and all that. He's not going to be here next week, but the week after he'll be here, and uh, we'll have a celebration for you. All right? Brothers and sisters, have you been blessed this morning? Yes. Hear now this benediction. Even in our brokenness, we are capable of being in the hands and feet of God. Even in our brokenness, we are capable to bring heaven to earth. So today, let's celebrate Easter. But tomorrow, let's do the work of Easter. Amen? Amen.